So that, uh, with that said, let's jump into uh, the character setup. So before I capture anything for a new project, I got to set up any new characters that are needed. And uh, I do that in Maya. I'm just going to kind of whip through my, my process here. But generally, um, I use the, a base set of 52 Apple blend shapes, uh, which you can find on our Kite and Lightning blog. Uh, it's just a zip file, a bunch of OBJs. Um, and this is sort of what they, the basis of their system, uh, given this sort of generic face. And what I'll do is I'll sort of retrofit that face onto my character uh, in Maya, or you can use like Wrap 3D or something. And then with those two pieces, I can uh, use two deformers in Maya, uh, called one's called uh, 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 the, what is that one called? So there's Delta Mush, and then there's the Wrap Deformer, which together sort of lock my character onto uh, the Apple Blend Shapes. And then I do a quick little script, and essentially it just generates me new blend shapes uh, for these characters. Uh, and then depending on the character, I'll kind of go back and spend anywhere from an hour or more, depending on if it's a hero character or not, um, just sort of hand sculpting the the key blend shapes um, like the jaw open the smiles the frowns um, and just kind of get them right for each character uh, definitely makes a big difference uh, that those hand tunings uh, and then once once the characters are kind of set up then it's time to jump into the capture process so in this case i'm just going to kind of pretend that uh, i'm in my suit and um, I'm, I'm running live. So just imagine this, this take is, is me live. And uh, you can kind of see here that this guy has his, hand, his hands animated. So this is after I got my, my Manus gloves, it just pipes right into the, to the core data. Um, and this is, I think this, whoops, this is like Mandao that I, I captured for a recent music video. Um, so I'm just gonna play this in the background. And once I'm kind of live into here, then I jump into Unreal, and basically, I have a an empty level, a simple level for every single character that I capture. Um, and uh, so let's just take a look at the agent. And so super simple, empty scene, just the character. He has a very simple recorder blueprint, um, which you can see is like just the XSense data and just the iPhone data coming in, live link being blended together. Uh, into sort of one animation output. Uh, so I keep it super simple. Um, and uh, the reason is I just don't want to have anything competing with uh, with the data. Like I don't want to I don't want to be rendering a heavy scene or or anything that might interfere with the, the quality of the data coming in. Um, and plus as a single person, I can't see what I'm doing anyway on here. So I just like to keep it simple. The other thing I do is I have this uh, mocap recorder blueprint. And essentially uh, what you would normally do is just go into take recorder, you've got your, uh, you know, your character and your audio coming in, and then you just hit record and stop. Uh, what I've got is uh, I've set that up as a key command. So if I hit the R key, it'll trigger, it'll tell the take recorder to start recording, and then it'll simultaneously send a, a, a UDP command into the XM software telling it to record. So in a way, it's kind of bootleg. It's like hitting play and record at the same time. And so it's it's probably just within a few frames of accuracy. It's not going to be super frame accurate, um, but which is fine for what I'm doing. And uh, you could probably write something easily enough to, to make sure that it's frame accurate. But so basically just hitting record and stop at the same time. And uh, it also lets me kind of like center up my character within the MVN world, uh, do that using UDP commands as well. Um, so the other, the, the, the main reason why I actually record uh, into Unreal at the same time, or sorry, record in Unreal and in uh, MVN at the same time is that the data that you're recording live from the XNs into Unreal isn't uh, as good as it can get. So basically um, a lot of the magic of XNs comes in their HD post process, uh, which you do after you've done your capture. You can kind of just uh, reprocess these clips. Uh, and it's, to me, it's incredible how it just kind of brings back sort of all these juicy details and nuances of your performance. Um, and I probably HD process like 90% of everything that I end up putting out on YouTube. Um, 
you know, there's occasionally there's like mid ground or background characters that the live data is totally fine for. So I don't, so don't bother. Um, now the other thing I want to show you guys that I, I, I have and use and love is this, uh, this is a little Bluetooth keyboard and you can kind of just Velcro it to your arm. And, um, it's, it's awesome. If you're like a one man band or a one woman band, you can, um, you know, start and stop your recordings without having to go up to the computer, but it's really valuable when like, sometimes I'll go into the middle of my room and that's where I want my center point to be depending on the action. Uh, and so I can just kind of hit a key. It'll center myself into the XN's, you know, zero, zero, zero space uh, for the beginning of the take. Uh, and that's super valuable for lining things up. Um, and it's super hard to do if you're just one person trying to hit the keyboard at the same time. So this is very valuable. You can even type in like, you know, take names and things like that uh, if you want to, or set up other functions. 